Hey guys, how's it going? It's Steph here. And in this video today, I'm going to be talking about the top five features that I'm excited about when it comes to Revit 2024. This definitely isn't the full list of features. Um, I'm going to include a link in the description to a video by the Revit Pure, who goes over a lot more features and also Autodesk link in terms of if you want to see all the other features. But I'm just going to be going over the main things that I'm personally most excited about. In general, there's a few things that are quite nice in this update. Um, we did get quite a big overhaul graphically as more in terms of the UI as well and one big feature when it comes to landscape and yeah that's what I'm going to go over so let's get into it so the first one that I'm going to be talking about is as you can see on the screen here is that we finally got dark mode in Revit okay so this now looks a lot more like AutoCAD for all you AutoCAD fans um, I guess this is something that's quite nice especially since quite a few architects work late hours uh, this is going to be a lot easier on your eyes it does look pretty decent overall so if I go to level one or something here you can see this is how it looks um, one, if you want to activate dark mode, all you need to do is go to your view tab here and then click on canvas theme. If I click on canvas theme again, it's going to take me back to Revit's default, which was the light mode. Click on canvas theme. This is the new button that brings us to dark mode. So as you can see here, I can have my um, actual viewport in um, light mode, the um, actual properties browser and all the ribbons up top. This is from this is from a separate setting, which was done, which we had for a while now. But if you want to make this into a dark mode, all you have to do is go to file options go to colors and then here you can choose either dark mode or light mode or whatever your system setting is using if you're on windows so here if you want this to be in light there you go and then if you actually want it to be on dark mode again everything on dark mode options let's go to colors dark here and canvas canvas theme will also automatically be on dark from what i believe so you do have the option to kind of differentiate the two one thing that i've noticed or one thing that i've seen um, someone mentioned this is Gavin Crump or the Aussie BIM guru and I kind of agree with his comment here is that they were a bit lazy or they didn't really go through with the full feature and when it comes to um, say menus or pop-ups right so if I go to floor plan here and I go to edit type you can see these sub menus these aren't in dark mode which is quite a big shame and um, this will happen all the way throughout the project wherever you do any type of um, thing that you can edit say if I go here to the grid here, this is not in dark mode, same with Propagate Grid Extents, this isn't in dark mode, it's quite unfortunate, but hopefully they'll fix that in a future release. Um, so yeah, that's one thing to keep an eye on. Okay, I got rid of dark mode, I wasn't the biggest fan of it, if I'm going to be honest, especially when it comes to stuff like shaded views. But as you can see here, this is a project file, this isn't one that I've made, this is a new project file given to us by Revit, so I'm sure all of you lots have seen that sample house file that's been um, going around and these... Um, the typical, I think it was an office building or a school, but now Revit have given us or Autodesk have given us a new sample file and this is really great. I think it's going to be useful for a lot of students. The main thing I like about this is that it's more, it's a more ambitious design. It's showing people that you can do some, you know, nice detailed stuff in um, Revit. Normally people would think, oh, they think to design this in Rhino, SketchUp. I mean, feel free to use the tool that you want, but this is showcasing more of what is capable in Revit and you can document it nicely. So yeah, this is one thing that I think is going to be really useful for people, especially when it comes to students. You know, you can see how all these slanted walls are made. You can see how all these railings are applied, um, as well as the facade. We've got a different facade model here, and this actually has some different, this actually has some decent detail when it comes to sills and lintels and all these architectural columns here. Overall, um, there's not that much to say about it, but I am happy that they're actually stepping up their game on the sample file. So yeah, that's another feature that I like. Another feature that I like whilst we're on this kind of visual topic is the fact that they've added a new visual style mode and that's called textures. So with um, typically in Revit, this wasn't here before. So if you wanted to see something in color, you'd either have to do shaded, consistent colors or realistic. Shaded and consistent colors, they'd show the um, graphic display option of the material. So if I go to um, my materials here, manage materials, they showed the graphics of this material and that was nice. Well, sometimes you'd want to see the appearance of the material because this is how it would appear in a render engine. You know, most people uh, who use Revit nowadays are either going to use Enscape or Twinmotion, um, both which are like very valid, but you'd want to see what the appearance of the texture looks like. The only way to do that before was on realistic mode. But the thing with realistic mode is that it was quite heavy on your PC or it was quite slow, even though they did improve it in a previous version. It's not the best thing. Um, I've got quite a decent PC, but in general, you wouldn't want to see all your um, shadows on it sometimes, and you wouldn't just want to see um, everything that's on there. So if I went here and I went realistic, uh, in general, as you can see, it's quite slow to navigate around. Now we have the textures mode. So when I go here to textures, oh, going to the wrong button, here to textures, 
I can see what my model will look like um, just if I'm looking at the textures without the re actual realistic mode. This is really good when it comes to aligning materials, just in case you didn't align your graphics pattern and your texture. And in general, I think it's a pretty decent way to visualize your model, especially before you export it to something like um, Lumion, Enscape, or like I said, Twin Motion, just to make sure stuff is aligned and you know all the right stuff is assigned in terms of the materials. Okay, so another feature that I really like in this version of Revit is the fact that they've actually reworked the UI. So from what I have understand is that they've reworked the UI completely from the ground up, so they're able to do new things. For example, if you look at the, um, what's it called, the project browser here, you can see we now have the search button up top, right? This search, brow this search browser, or this search button on the project browser, now updates in real time. So if I wrote something like level, you can see I'm getting everything with the word level as I type along. It's updating in real time, it's more modern, right? So this is actually, it's quite useful. The main reason why I see this being like quite useful is the fact that if you go to a floor plan view, for example, and let's say we go to a section, just hit, go to this view, and let's say that I want to search for something. Say if I knew what I wanted in terms of a detail item, but I didn't want to flick through um, the buttons up here or search through it in the collapsible menu, you know, go through detail items and then see what it is. If I just wrote something here, like, I don't know, the word insulation, oh, insulation, you can see that I can just select it here and then drag it into the view. This would end up saving quite a few people a lot of time. Like, this will end up saving people quite a lot of time from what I see. It's just random stuff that you're able to, like, drag and drop onto um, the project. So here, if I want to drag this up, it's saying, oh, you need to go to a specific view. But it's small things like this in terms of the UI that I think is going to make a massive difference. Again, I wouldn't upgrade purely for this, but this is worth noting. And the same thing can be said here. So if I go to my level one floor plan, one thing that was a bit annoying before was that if when you were managing views and sheets, you know, you could always go onto a sheet and tab or select into a view. Now you're able to do the reverse. So say I've got this view open and let's say I want to see what sheet this is on. What I can do now is I can just right click anywhere on the view and hit open sheet. This is such a small like change, but it actually when you're working in a firm, I feel like this would make a big difference to anyone um, that hasn't got their project browser that's set up in a specific way. Overall, in terms of the UI, when it comes here, um, icons have been updated. I think I read on their um, page that over 2,000 icons have been updated. I mean, whether anyone cares about that, that's up to you. So here, as you can see, all these have been updated. I think they're going for something that's a bit more modern. Another feature that I'm excited about is the fact that we can now choose to align the um, surface pattern of a shape to either the entire object or to the to its split face, I guess, to its subface. So for example, if I've got this shape here and I go modify sub elements, before when you've done something like this and you made all of this say 1000, and if I made this one 500, you can see once I'm done here that our brick pattern has misaligned, right? This makes sense, especially since it's sloping. But in general, if I press AL or I go to my align tool, before in Revit, if you want to align something, you could only do it face by face. So you'd have to fix them one by one. Um, now you have the option to actually align the pattern to the entire object, right? So this isn't going to actually fix the alignment because it's a 3D shape, the way it tiles, but you're at least going to align the same subfaces to the same reference point, right? So if I go here to pattern and now I do entire surface, if I now say, hey, let's choose this horizontal line or let's choose the horizontal line of the shape, and now I click on this one, you can see all the horizontals are flat. Same thing as if I went to this shape and then I chose this um, horizontal, is now going to make this shape follow the same angle. Uh, this might seem like a small feature, but it's really useful because before in Revit, all we had was this um, one where we had to do it one by one for each shape. And now we can actually fix it the way we um, want to. Or now we can actually um, choose the entire surface. And I think that's going to be really helpful. So yeah, small feature, but I think it's decent. Okay, so this is probably the biggest feature that's come to Revit 2024. And it's the fact that we no longer have topo surfaces, right? Now we have the 3D version, which is topo solid. So if we go to the massing and site tab, you can see that this is completely reworked. Now we have this topo solid button instead. So when I go to it, and if I go to level zero here, if I create just a simple rectangle as an example and go to my 3D view, we can see now that we can now see that this is a 3D object. Hopefully we see more landscape designers coming to Revit. That's, this is gonna be so cool when it comes to collaboration. But when I go to level zero now, one thing I wanna show you that um, you may not notice is that before, whenever you had to create a um, topo surface, you could only determine the edges of it by points, right? Everything would either be finished in a, in a linear edge. Now we can even make it finish by curves. And this is just, it's completely reworked, which is quite cool. So if I go here and I hit tick, there we go. We can see it ends like that. It's a small thing I know, but I'm just showing you. Um, if I go to this um, 
topo to the, to the uh, if I go to this topo solid and I do modify sub elements, if I add a point in here, there we go, it works similar to before or almost like a floor. Now if I click on this point and let's say we make this one 500 above, this one minus 200 below, and this one 300, you can see it's similar to a floor or the topo, the what's it called, the topo surface that we had before. But now if I click on this um, topo solid, you can see we can edit type and we can edit the structure of it almost like it was a floor. This is really useful because now if we go here, we can have variable layers for our topo solid, right? So say if I want um, this top part to be instead of uh, earth, if I want it to be something like grass, I'm not actually going to assign something there, but I can make the grass so it's at a constant um, thickness of 200. And then we can make the earth something that's variable so that, you know, there's going to be 200 mil of grass or just as an example. But no matter how deep this thing gets, there's always going to be variable, right? So if I go here, I hit OK, there we go. You can see that if I go, sorry, edit type, and let's actually just assign a material to it, just to make it easier. If I go grass, grass, there we go. I hit OK, OK. You can see we've now got this. If I go to uh, medium, or oh, actually, sorry, if I go to course, and let's cut through this. If I go to view, section box, and let's cut through it. You can see we now have got 200 mil of grass there. And this is quite cool. Um, in general, we couldn't really do this before, but I think this is so nice when it comes to topography. Like I said, hopefully we get more landscape designers in here. In general, this tool has been reworked nicely and I'm uh, quite happy with that. One thing you're gonna note though from this tab is the fact that building pads have now been removed, okay? So um, it's quite unfortunate. I think they were. this was something easier to do in Revit before where you could just draw a building pad and cut it. Well, now what you'd have to do is you now have to create a void in the in-place mass system. Um, this isn't the easiest thing for beginners to use. I understand that. So if I go to level zero here, if I want to create a, um, what's it called? If I want to create a cut for my building, I now have to draw it here. I mean, like I said, even already, it's just, it's just masses aren't the most um, familiar thing for beginners. And in general, I think this wasn't the best step to include, but I guess they have their reasons. Now if we create a solid form, and now we have to use the cut tool here to cut the solid with the void. There we go. This is essentially how we create our building pad, okay? And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Um, I know I didn't cover all the features and I did gloss over them in quick detail, but today I genuinely just wanted to check out Revit 2024 and see what was in them. These are the five or six features that I thought were the most useful, what I'd want to use. And like I said, I've link, I'm going to link down um, Autodesk's um, link for Revit 2024 and Revit Pure's video because he covers this in a lot more detail and more features and I just done the ones that I thought were the most interesting to me. So if you did enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you leave a like and that's it. Take care guys. Cheers.